Hello, I'm Francis Healy from Global Net 21. And today I've got Kate Osmar with me, who is the MP for North London constituency, Edmonton. Now, Kate is a newly elected MP. She only got into Parliament in the last election last year, and she's had quite a rapid rise. Next week, she's off to Strasbourg for the Council of Europe, and she's just been appointed um, a, a junior shadow minister for women and equality. So it's quite a rapid rise. Could I ask you first, Kate, do you sometimes sort of pinch yourself and say, is this real? Hello, Francis. Yes, um, thank you for your kind introduction. Yeah, sometimes I do pinch myself. Things have moved very, very quickly. I mean, what I need to add to, to the resume is that I was selected very late um, last year, so which was in February. And obviously the general election was in May. So from May to this point, a lot has happened um, to me. Uh, I, I welcome it, but yes, I do pinch myself. Um, who would have thought? <laughs> Humble me from North London could um, be now you know, be a junior minister. Yeah, well, you're there now and, uh, you know, you, you, you've got your place in, in, in the House of Parliament. Um, and we're going to do a meeting, as you know, next week on um, austerity and social justice. And you'll be on your way back from Strasbourg then. But you belong to a constituency which has a lot of social deprivation, pockets of poverty. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the sort of constituency you represent. Well, the constituency that I represent, you know, since, you know, the 1960s, which in, in, during that period of time, it was predominantly white working class, has changed um, profoundly. It is very multicultural now. We, I have a, a lot of people from, you know, from Africa. I've got a huge Turkish, Cypriot and Kurdish um, community. And, you know, as you said, there is huge pockets of poverty, which um, under this government, my community have really suffered. You know, I've got some wards, you know, when it comes to the whole of the UK, one of my wards has got so many people that have never had a job that live in that ward. And, you know, this government has, has failed them. And it, it is a huge worry for me. It's a huge concern for me. I, I mean, how, how much do you think austerity, I mean, the government's policies of austerity and indeed the previous governments to some extent, how, how, to what extent do you think that has affected constituencies like yours and places up and down the country where the income levels are quite low? Well, you know, as you've said, you know, under consecutive governments, you know, constituencies like Edmonton have suffered. And I totally agree, you know, the, the hard reality of, of austerity for people that live in my constituency can be reflected in the way that these very punitive sanctions which have been dished out very very easily on people who for instance miss signing on because they've gone for a job interview or have complex needs whether they're suffering with mental health problems um, or maybe you know they don't even have any money to go and sign on these people are under this government really really facing a hard time so austerity is hitting the most vulnerable the hardest and the most vulnerable i must say live in my constituency i mean so, some people say that uh, austerity is necessary that you need pain in order to gain do you mm -hmm. think there is any sort of credence in that or do you think that's a, a misconception totally well you know i am totally in agreement that we need to you know you know get this deficit down they say there's a deficit so let's get it down but austerity is an ideology it's not and for, for people in my constituency the way it's been here the way that they have been affected by austerity means that women who for instance have part-time jobs who don't get enough salary and get a top up are facing cuts to well, we're facing cuts to the tax credits obviously we had a slight u-turn but i can assure you with the universal credits people in my constituency will still be affected what we've also seen is that the one percenters are getting richer and richer so you know we're not in it together we're not all benefiting for, for under austerity what we're seeing is that some people are getting richer and a lot of people are actually getting poorer. We have, I have lots of people that come to my constituency struggling to pay their rents because there's no control on private landlords, 
private landlords can charge anything. And if you don't get enough money in your pocket, how are you going to, you know, pay that shortfall? Which means that people are threatened with losing their homes. You know, it's not good enough. Women are disproportionately being affected by austerity. If you work in the public sector, you know, you're either being made redundant or if you are allowed to stay, you're ending up doing free people's jobs and you're not getting paid more for it. So I, I, I you know, I have a real issue with, you know, is it necessary? It's not necessary if the poorer are getting poorer. So, so what policies would you advocate instead of austerity and still be able to keep the economy in the same condition? Well, John McDonnell, who is the shadow chancellor, he has launched a series of seminars and these seminars are going to be led by various economic specialists who are going to present different alternative options to the current system. They will look at, you know, how these corporations are able to not pay their taxes. The banking culture as it is has to be changed, has to be looked at. We, you know, everyday people are not benefiting from the banking system that we have at the moment because, you know, since the crash in 2008, poorest, the poorest in society are having to pay for that huge crash. Meanwhile, the bankers, the shareholders are, you know, benefiting from this from this austerity. So like I said, John McDonnell has presented a new way of doing economics and there's going to be a series of seminars and lectures. And I think people should go along and listen and learn alternative ways of banking, which are in existence in places like Germany, you know, Iceland, and even you know France has, has, has different styles of banking where the local people are able to bank, you know, in small banks where they know the bank manager, they know everybody, the money is going around in the community and everyone benefits from that. And that isn't happening at the moment, sadly. Okay, so there are alternative policies, people like Stiglitz and other economists have argued for that. Um, yes. Groups like Positive Money have argued for that and John McDonald is looking at all those alternatives. That's so, right. So is the basis of what he's doing and what you believe is that um, economic policies should be based not just upon prosperity and growth, but they should always be based upon social justice. Well, that is exactly where um, John McDonnell is coming from. He's looking at social justice, he's looking at you know dis distribution of wealth, he's looking at how we can all benefit and give back to the same system. So we all are able to see you know, and see the difference that our, our input has made. Whereas as it stands, if you have, if you're poor, you're not able to be part of the economy, you're seen as someone who is a burden. And if you're rich, you are shown and encouraged to pay very little tax, you know, maybe don't even live in this country, have a property and just win, 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 which it's going to bust. Well, it has busted, sorry, it busted in 2008. And from what we can see, there is no change in place. So we, as, as the, the um, Her Majesty's opposition, we have to offer something different for our electorate so that they will actually vote for us. Okay, well, thanks very much for doing that short interview. That's just ideal for what we need for the meeting and for letting other people hear your views as well. So good luck next week in Strasbourg. Thank and you. Good luck in, and good luck in your new, new portfolio on equality and women as well. Thank you so much, Francis. I'm sorry I won't be there, but um, let's do something again in the near future. Thank you again. Okay, I'd love to do that. So that's great.